You're watching Power Nation. Hey guys, welcome to Detroit Muscle. Today we have quite an assortment of some eclectic subject matter. If you're into bucking Broncos, getting your swerve on, and jumping some Mopars, you're gonna like what we're doing today. What's going on, guys? My name is Josh Mason. And I'm Daniel Boshears. Tommy let us loose out of the shop today so we can work on this driveway rescue. We're working on a 1970 Ford Bronco, but it needs a little TLC. Now, the owner loaned us a key, so we're taking it for a spin. And for 50 feet, this thing looks pretty snazzy. Now, for being a 50-year-old car, the interior isn't in bad shape. Obviously, the owner took care of it, but there's going to be little things we're going to have to address. Now after weaving through a couple of those corners back there, I can feel the steering is a little bit on the loose side. The owner made it aware to me, could be a drag link, could be some tie rods, but we won't know until we get it back to the shop. Now while we were looking over our Ford Bronco with the owner, he said that the shocks had some high mileage. And when we looked at them, boy did they look it. So we're gonna go ahead and address those as well. We also noticed some leaks mainly coming from the transfer case. Now with all these fixes, there's nothing me and Daniel can't handle, especially with the help of Rock Auto. We'll get this 50-year-old girl California beach bombing in no time. You didn't think I would let these guys do all this on their own, did you? No, I was back at the shop giving Tom from Rock Auto the nickel tour around the shop, checking out all of our old or dead projects from the retro javelin you guys saw earlier this year to the hearse we know you all love. Now, obviously, you can tell what this thing is. A practical station wagon. Absolutely. You know, if you need to haul, well, it's, you can haul just about whatever you would want to in it. Dead or alive. <laughs> Tom is a fan of these old cars and has a few of his own. It's great having Rock Auto to partner with us to help out with these driveway rescues. That gets these old cars back out on the road so people can enjoy them. Yeah, I've seen driveway rescue fix everything from, a, I think there's a GMA body front wheel drive car that just super reliable once you, you put the right parts into it and, and spruce it up. And then cars that have been family heirlooms, old trucks that have been in the family for generations that, hey, hey this really means a lot to us, we want to fix it up. Um, fun project cars, somebody always dreamed of of, of getting the fun truck or fun muscle car and, and restoring it, and they just never quite got the project going, and Driver Rescue comes along and, and gives them that kick they need to, to get it, the project done. Rock Auto has been a huge help providing OEM parts for all of our driveway rescues, and we've used them a number of times on our project vehicles, like our Javelin. You know, finding elements for a 50-year-old wiring harness can be tricky. Rock Auto had what we needed. And with their help and a little bit of work, we can have this Bronco back out on the highway for years to come. Now guys, fortunately for me and Daniel, we're doing our driveway rescue in-house, which means we get to use our lift that's gonna come in real handy. Boy, you got that right. Rock Auto had no problem filling our parts list, so that made our job a whole lot easier. Now with our parts, we're gonna address a leaky transfer case, some suspension components, some shocks, and some uh, eyes for our good old Bronco. Yeah, buddy. Well, them parts ain't gonna unload themselves, so we better get busy. Let's get them. All right, here you go. Awesome. Now, one of the first things we're gonna to do today is stop the leaks in this old transfer case. Now, we did our initial inspection. We noticed that it had a couple of leaky gaskets, and lucky for us, Rock Auto had exactly what we needed. Typically, you wanna stop leaks like this because you don't want your gearbox to run out of oil and get real expensive real fast. Now, normally, we would drain the drain plug, but due to this custom exhaust system, you really can't get to it. Luckily, there's more than one way to skin a cat. 
Now, the first thing I noticed when I took the plate off was there's no gasket here, and that's probably the reason for the leak. Lucky for us, there's no broke teeth or any other damage inside the transfer case, so we should be able to clean our parts, put our gaskets on, and just move on to the other parts of the suspension. Now, here's a quick tip for you. Anytime you're cleaning a gasket surface like the one on this transfer case, it's a good idea not to spray brake cleaner or carburetor cleaner or any other kind of solvent up into the gearbox. What this will do is prematurely wash the oil out of the bearings and make them potentially fail. Now, what we're going to do is spray our cleaner on a rag and wipe the surface off until it comes clean. Next, gear oil gasket sealant on the cover. And then on the gasket. And then after that, everything gets torqued down to spec. Coming up, the guys finish up that gnarly Bronco and carve up some corners on the open road. Now that Daniel's taking care of our transfer case leak, we can go ahead and swap out the shocks. Now, first things first, we got to get these wheels and tires off. Before we get started tearing down some of the parts on this 51-year-old Bronco, it's always a good idea to spray everything with a good shot of Seafoam Deep Creek. It's a powerful penetrating oil and lubricant that works fast to break metal surface tension and free stubborn parts from rust and corrosion. You can use it to protect metal parts, tools, or anything with moving components. It just makes the whole process easier. We're planning to hit the road in our Bronco, but now would be an excellent time for some preventative maintenance, so we're gonna use Seafoam's TransTune. It helps restore shift quality by cleaning sticky varnish from valve bodies and shift solenoids. It also works great as a transfluid conditioner by simply pouring some in. And finally, this old girl will get some Seafoam high mileage treatment. You can also add it to engine oil to clean and prevent common causes of oil burning. Plus, it reduces long-term engine wear and helps prevent rough performance. It's especially formulated for gasoline cars and trucks with over 75,000 miles. Now that everything is properly lubricated, we can move forward with tearing down the rest of our Bronco. I didn't want to come off with the hand tools. I'm going to teach it a lesson with the old impact. <laughs> Depending on the manufacturer, sometimes you don't get the hardware that you need, but it's always advised to use grade 8 hardware for your replacement. Now guys, there's nothing wrong with using a zip tie, but it's always good to use a hose clamp because you know it's going to hold that dust cover tight. One down, three to go guys. Don't want to be a broken record and show you through the process of the other three, but now you're probably wondering, how do you get these shocks set? Now with this kind of a shock guys, you're pretty flexible when it comes down to how soft you want the ride or how stiff you want the ride, obviously by just the adjustment of a knob. But to get us started and on the road, We'll put it at the half soft, half hard setting. Well, now that we got our shocks all on guys, next we gotta address these million mile looking suspension components. But luckily for Rock Auto, they set us up just right with a new steering damper, a drag link, and some tie rods. But before we can put all our fancy stuff on, we gotta get these off.
how I'm not covered in grease right now is beyond me, but with the old parts off, we can go ahead and assemble the new parts. Now guys, it's always a good idea to put some anti-seize on these threads because later down the road, if you wanna take these apart, we'll come off with these. Typically when you're replacing steering components, it's a good practice to measure the length of the tie rods to help minimize misalignment. This speeds up the installation and helps you get it to the shop for an alignment. We finish off the tie rod replacement installation with cotter pins, which is an absolute requirement because those castle nuts can possibly back out. Next is the drag link, which also requires cotter pins as well that you see here, for the same reason. With so many components that have been installed, it's always good to go back and double check your work to make sure everything is tight. To finish off our suspension upgrades, our Bronco gets a brand new steering damper that assists stabilizing the steering for better drivability. With everything back together, we hit the road. Well, what do you think? Well, this thing's riding a whole lot better with the new shocks we put on it. Man, it's driving a lot better too because it's not darting left to right now that that suspension's all tightened up. I can see that. Well, I believe the owner is going to be real happy with the improvements we made on his Bronco. Yeah, and all thanks to Rock Auto, we got everything we needed to make this driveway rescue happen. Absolutely. Let's go back to the shop. Yeah, buddy, we got to get some work done. Coming up, we check out Holly's Mo Party, where it's all Mopar or no car. Well, you guys know I'm a big fan of the Mopar, so what better place to check a bunch of them out than here at Holly's Mo Party? What'd you get me into? A dang good time, brother. Mo Party, it's a party. It's just like the name says. Like, like at Holly events, our whole thing is it's not just the car show. We bring in autocross and drag racing at the same time and the chassis dyno going on at the same time. We'll bring in the Dodge Thrill Rides are here giving people rides in their Hellcats and the General Lee will be here jumping from ramp to ramp and going up on two wheels. And so when you come here, we want it to be action packed from the day, the moment you get in till you're ready to leave. Got a, a nice vendor row, about 60 plus swap meet vendors here. So if you've got a car that you don't really have the parts for and there's no aftermarket parts for them, we got a swap meet. Many of our you know, staff members and team bring their own cars out. And we build them for these events just like everybody else does. And we're car guys at Holly and we, we want to put these events on like we want to do these events. You know, brother, I always like checking out the swap meets almost more than the car shows because you never know what you're going to find. No, it looks like we can build cars or we could build antique art with all these parts that we're looking at. It's kind of crazy what you see at these kind of things. Well, I'm sure like a guy can come down an aisle like this that he's been searching for this part for years, but then some other guy that's had it in the back of his garage, he's just got it set up on the table for sale and win-win scenario. She's a beaut. Look at this thing. Well, tell me, Tommy, what am I looking at? What we have here is a fine example of some pure Mopar muscle. It's a 1969 Dodge Super V. These were built for high performance. Back in the day, you could simply walk yourself into a dealership and more or less buy yourself a race car. And this one appears to have a kind of rare and odd option, if you will which makes it really sought after, if it's actually the real deal. What I'm referring to is it appears to have an A12 package. 
Well, when you say it's an A12, is that, what's special about an A12? Is that just like from factory, like their race car or something? That means it has a lift-off fiberglass hood. It doesn't have any hinges or even a latch. It's held in place with hood pins on all four corners. And this was another thing that Dodge did to lighten them up, which we both know means speed. Does this thing have a special engine, special transmission, rear end, anything? You know, it's big block or six pack is what they call them. Four speed or automatic, more than likely a four speed. Let's just check it out and see what it's got. Now this thing is bare bones. This does have a four speed, but check out even the plainness of the vinyl on this thing. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of detail I'm seeing in the interior. Now, are they trying to like save weight? Well, you gotta think back in the day, more options, more expensive. They were trying to put a lot of performance in the car, not put stuff in it to make it heavy and make this thing fast. Now the old car's kind of dirty and you can tell by this emblem, we could call this one like the nipped wing B in a way. It's kind of crusty, but you know, it's just kind of cool to see the old cars that they dug out of the weeds or barns or any of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I do kind of like that they still got the uh, bees nest on the roof over here. Yeah, if we get some showers, so a car's gonna look a little bit different though. <laughs> you know, with all these Mopars here, you think we're gonna see Daisy Duke? There's a pretty good chance. I've seen a couple good old boys running around here. I'm excited for that. There's so much to see and do here. Yeah, and what's great is it's all Mopar. Oh, it's awesome. Second time here. I was here first uh, last year. Didn't experience the autocross. I just watched and uh, did the uh, ride-alongs with the professionals. Then uh, I decided with my friend Natalie, uh, we decided to do it this year and drive the cars. And uh, it's if you've never done it, it's an experience. You got to do it. You got to bring your car out near and do it. I just love Mopar. I've always have since I was knee high to a grasshopper. And it's just uh, I saw a Superbird one one day when I was probably about seven. I said I love that car, and I've always been a Mopar fan ever since. Oh, don't even think about it. Just come. I mean, that's what you got to do. Don't even just get in the car and come. It, it's a great experience. It really is. It's awesome out here. Right. Coming up, our pilgrimage to Mo Party turns up a cornucopia of Chrysler history. While I've been walking around Mo Party here, I thought I was going to see a bunch of Chargers and Challengers, but. I found this very awesome 34 Plymouth that is owned by Gary Conrad here that he built himself. Gary, tell us about this ride right here. Found it after searching a bunch on the internet. It was a rolling chassis. Showed it to my wife, told her I was gonna buy it. And she allowed you to buy it? <laughs> I told her I was gonna strip the fenders off it and make a fenderless coupe, and then she told me, no, it's gotta keep the fenders. So I figured that was permission to buy it. <laughs> right, how long did it take you to build? Uh, I've spent about the last three years building it. Okay, so about three years. Tell me about the engine, transmission, drivetrain. The engine is a 1955 Chrysler 331 Hemi. The transmission is a 1990 Dodge four-speed automatic, so it has overdrive, plus it has lock-up converter. It's got a narrowed eight and three-quarter Mopar rear end in it. The, the frame, it's a stock frame that's been boxed in. I did the boxing on it, and I also Z'd it three inches in the front to give it a lower profile in the front end, get the front end down. It's got a Mustang II type front suspension. Okay. It's all on coilovers, four-wheel disc brakes, handles like a go-kart. Nice. Well, I mean, this car looks like it's a driver. This is not something that you just park in your garage. No, we drive it every place. It was nothing to put on 700 miles in one weekend with it. Right. And, and it gets 17 miles to the gallon. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Walk me through the interior a little bit. The interior's got the, it's got the stock seat in it that's been reupholstered. The suicide door is a factory and it also got, it also has what they call smoker's windows in it, which when you roll up the window, you just flip this lever and then this window rolls down and the vent window will open up. I've got the other one set up that way. Nice. But if you want the full, the full AC, you roll it all down, roll out the windshield, roll down the back window, mm -hmm. and, and it's good. Very cool. <laughs> it's got all the factory gauges, and they all work. I've had to send some of them out to be repaired, but. Okay. Now, how hard or easy is that to make uh, those gauges work with this type of an engine? 
It really wasn't that hard because of this engine being so old, you know, being a 1955 model. Gotcha. All the gauges are mechanical. That's awesome. I, I really, I love this car. It stands out, um, and I just love that you drive this thing. Like, that's super cool. I would love to take this, you know, to like a local town and just cruise in the back roads. This, this is too cool, and I even love that you still kept the, uh, you know, the, the patina look, but yet you updated with all the modern stuff. Like, this thing's awesome, Gary. Like, great job. Thank you. My dad was a Mopar guy back when I, when I was young, um, brought that up. I'm a 33-year veteran of a uh, Chrysler dealership. I'm a service manager at Iverson Chrysler in South Dakota. So we traveled uh, nine or seven miles for the Mopar because of the autocross and the Grand Champion competition. We uh, do a lot of autocross outside of this, SCCA good guys. So we thought, why not uh, come clear down here if Mopar is going to put that on, and, and it's been great. It's, it's awesome to be able to race against light cars, because um, that's where we are, we're Mopar. So um, if they are a, a Mopar person through and through, they have to be here. I agree with them. They're trying to make this the premier Mopar event. Um, and I think it's completely possible from the drag race and stuff. Uh, now it's all drag race to this autocross. As you can see, this autocross getting bigger and bigger um, and seeing more Mopars autocross racing. And uh, you're gonna see everything, you know, anywhere from a, a little four-door GLH uh, Dodge Omni running very, very well times to a, a Viper um, and then head over the drag strip and see a um, seven second, uh, you know, challenge of the runs in the drag pack class, it's crazy. So there's something for everybody here. Well, brother, I don't know about you, but I've had a real good time. Same here, I've had a great time checking out all these Mopars. Thanks for taking me. Sure, man. We'll have to come back next year. Maybe that time we can bring something of our own. Absolutely. If you like what you've seen on today's show, or if you have any questions, go to PowerNationTV.com. And until next time, y'all have a good one.